Well, I picked up this free freezer on Facebook Marketplace today, and the listing said that it turns on, it doesn't get cold. So I looked inside, and it came with free beer. So I'm already ahead on the deal, even if I can't get it working. I've already did a little bit of diagnosis. Let me take you through what I've done so far. So I turned it all the way to cold, or maximum cold, to make sure that the freezer actually should turn on. And then I just went ahead and plugged it in and listened to what happened. One hand plug in, can he do it? Contact. I can hear a compressor running. I can also hear a fan running, like it should. I haven't had it running obviously long enough to see if it's cooling, but I'm gonna assume that the compressor works and that it would cool down this freezer. Now I'm gonna unplug it and let it sit for just a minute. And we're back. After resting for about a minute, I'm gonna plug it in again. I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear fan, but no compressor. I also can't feel the compressor, which I could earlier. So a restart is not working. I bet that's what the problem is. It can cycle on after it's rested for a long time, cannot cycle back on for a restart. So I'm gonna take these connectors off. Of course, I'm gonna disconnect power first and take these connectors off. And then we'll use this sheet to walk through the basic troubleshooting process. Tools required are pretty simple, mainly just a multimeter that can do voltage AC and ohms. As a bonus, I've got an AC clamp meter. Also as a bonus are these leads that I made up that have alligator clips at the end for the multimeter, as well as the original leads. And I will get into the connectors with a screwdriver. In this case, this needs to be basically pried off, starting with this lower one. They're all a little bit different, but they all basically have the same connections on the compressor. Make more sense if I get these off. Okay, so there's two plugs in this case. There's this upper one, and it kind of locks in this lower one. Let's look at the compressor connections first. So you can see that there are three pins. The top one is centered, and then there's two on the bottom. There's only two arrangements you'll find these in. The one like I've got is here with a center connection on the top, but it could also be upside down. In any case, the connections are always going to be start, common, run, clockwise in that order. The trick is just to make sure that you know which one is common, and that's pretty easy to do by measuring ohms between those pins. So let me set up the multimeter and get some measurements. I'm connected to the two bottom pins on what I think are the start and run, and I measure 14.88 ohms. So I'm gonna write that down on my sheet. Next, we'll go to the bottom left to the top center, and we get 9.47. Now I think that's start to common, but I'll be able to verify it. So common start, 9.47. And lastly, center tap to the right side pin. And that measures 5.67. The way that you know you've got this right is that two of these measurements should add up to the third. And the one that is the sum and the largest number, that is going to be your start to run. It's because you've got two windings. There's the start winding to common and then the run winding to common. The way I kind of think about it is like starting a lawnmower. There's the string pull, which does turn the blade, but you're not going to sit there and pull it all the way down your lawn. That's just for getting it going. And then there's the running, which is really the engine taking off. And if you were to keep on pulling the start after you get going, you might actually do damage. So the way this works is that power is going to be sent to the run and start windings in parallel initially. And then shortly after startup, the start winding is going to be powered off. So in any case, these are the measurements of the resistance across these windings. Now we're going to make sure that there's no connection between any of these pins and ground, which essentially is the body of the compressor. So what I can do is put one of my clips on this tab, which is helpfully already connected to the case, and then connect the other alligator to each of the three pins and verify that I've got OL, or basically out of range, in every case. So that's common, that's start, and that is run. So we don't have any shorts between any of the pins in the case, and we know the measurements between each of the pins. The run pin should be the lowest ohms, and it is in this case. The start pin should be a little bit higher, and then, like I said, start run should be the most, and start run must add up 
be the sum of the other two. There's another thing to kind of rule of thumb is that these two numbers, the start and the run figures, they shouldn't be too far apart. Three ohms would be better, but these are about four ohms apart. So we'll do 9.47 plus 5.67. Remember how to do math from a long time ago, 15.14. Hmm, not exactly right, but close enough. So 14.88 to 15.14. I'm going to say that's within tolerance. So does that match? Yes. The, the start to run resistance is the sum of the common to start and common to run resistances. And the delta between the two will take 9.47 minus 5.67. Almost had to consult my third grade teacher. We're going to borrow 10, 8, well, actually should be over here, 3.8. So the difference between the two windings, 3.8. Can he make the sign? Yep, that's an ohm sign. That's ohms. 3.8 ohms is the difference. So far, things are working out well. Oh, and I can check this one off too. Any pin to ground should be open. Yes, 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 yes. Good news. So I've checked the windings on the motor. There's nothing obviously wrong. And so now I'm going to go on and look at the connections to that motor. So this is basically a protection device that prevents an overcurrent situation. So this plugs into common. If you were to start up the pump and let's say it's seized or something, uh, it'll pull a lot of amperage and this will disconnect power. There's a device in here that when it gets hot, it disconnects the pin side connector from the spade connector on the outside. And when it cools back down, it does reset itself. Then the other connector is what connects to your start and run pins. It just has a single wire going to it and it happens to be on the run side. Actually, that's not accidental. It connects to the run side directly. And then internally, there's a PTC or positive temperature coefficient uh, device between the two pins. And what that does is it allows low resistance when it's cold and high resistance when it warms up. So initially, because of low resistance, these two connections are in parallel. In other words, this line feeds both of them. So that's gonna turn on the start winding and the run winding at the same time. But the start winding is going to start pulling current. That current's gonna go across from the run side to the start side, and it's gonna heat up that PTC inside. The PTC is going to get to a hot state, and it's actually gonna shut off the start winding. And it doesn't actually cool down, it still flows a little bit, enough power to stay warm and, there, and therefore stay uh, disconnected. But once it heats up for the remainder of that running cycle, um, until the freezer turns it back off again, power will only flow through the run side. The way you test these things is with the multimeter as well. So I've changed over to standard probes and we'll start with the current overload device. And you want to see some resistance, but very little on here. That is, you don't want to see OL, that would be no connection whatsoever, but you don't want to see high resistance either. It should be like under an ohm. So I've got one probe connected to the connector that goes onto common, and then I'll just connect the other probe onto this tab, which is in parallel with this spade connector here. And it's coming down. There we go. Well under an ohm. That's what you would expect. Now we can switch over to the PTC starter relay, and you test it just by putting a probe into each hole. And hopefully they stay. And here you want to see low ohms again not nothing but you should see something in the, in the area of like four to six ohms and there we go we're getting about 5.4 so that's good you need to have some resistance in here in order for that ptc to work there has to be resistance that the power goes across to create the heat which then makes the ptc open up and uh and and block power uh, a little bit after the motor starts so that looks like it's testing good the overcurrent protection looks like it's testing good, even though it does have a little plastic tab that's broken off. So neither of these are obvious culprits. So what do we know? We know that the compressor can turn on sometimes, so it gets current, at least in certain situations, and then sometimes it doesn't turn on. So I've reattached everything and put on the clamp meter. Now I'm going to turn on the refrigerator. Well, I'm going to plug it in again, and I'm going to see what the reading is on my clamp meter when the compressor does start up and does not start up. So plugging it in now. Um, I think I heard a click in the other room. 
Well, my GFCI circuit breaker tripped two times in a row when I tried to plug in power, just like I had it plugged in before. It's flipping as soon as this compressor or fan will both try to turn on. So that's a new development. Perhaps now is a good time to try this device. It's called a hard start kit. And what it is, well, it functions as a troubleshooting tool, but can also be an actual fix for older compressors that are having a hard time getting started, which is what I'm experiencing. So what this is, is a great big capacitor, which helps on the starting winding. And it also optionally has this additional capacitor that goes on the run winding. So basically what this has are two inputs for your, your two line levels from the, refri the existing refrigerator and then three of these connectors that go on the compressor pins. White is start, red is run, and black is common. And these two spade connectors that are covered up are where you would plug in the optional run capacitor. It comes with a little wiring diagram here on the package. And normally the input lines would be the lines that are going from the original freezer board, control board to the compressor. And instead of using those lines right now, I've got it wired up to this. I think it's an old hair dryer plug and it's got a reset and test right on here. So that's convenient for having this reset instead of a breaker inside. And that sort of lets me manually turn on the compressor and choose when it turns on and off instead of relying on the wiring logic from the thermostat and whatever else is inside the freezer here. Okay, connections are made to the compressor to the hard start device. And I've got it plugged in, although it's not running yet because I've got it in the test position so that I can use the reset to actually trigger things on. I've also got my amp meter set up, the clamp meter on the common terminal so we can see how much current total is going to that compressor. So here we go. I hear a compressor running. Took a little bit higher amperage to start, and now it's settling into about 1.54, 1.53. Definitely running. So what I'll do is the same test I did earlier. I'm going to let this run for a few minutes, build up pressure, act like it's in one of its cooling cycles. Then I'll shut it down, plug it back in, just like we did before, and see if we see the same problem where it fails to restart. And now it's about one minute later. Let's give it a try. Yeah, compressor on. So basically it ran like this for about four minutes and then I shut it off and within 10, 20 seconds, I tried to start it again. It did not start then. And that's not totally unexpected because there would be pressure in the system and that starting on pressure might be uh, too much for it. But I only let it sit for one minute after that and I was able to restart it. So with this hard start kit, things to be, seem to be going well. And I haven't actually even installed the run capacitor just because this freezer didn't originally come with one, but that's a potential upgrade as well. I need to look into that a little bit further. We're pulling 1.5 amps again. This seems like it's a solution. At the very least, it's a troubleshooting step that has told me that this compressor seems like it's good. Well, considering the ground fault circuit interrupter is the thing that was tripping off, I actually tested between each of the line and neutral to the motor and a ground point, and there is no ground fault that actually exists. So I'm actually going to connect this up on a non-GFCI outlet. Ta-da! So I think what was happening is a startup torque on this motor and the resulting amperage draw was just tripping out that GFCI that I've got on the other circuit. So with that mystery solved, we're back into the diagnosis. At the point we already tried where you can start the compressor once, it pulls about 1.5 amps, and then after running for a little while, letting it rest, it will not restart, at least not with a, just a couple minute rest. It needed a lot more. So I'm gonna repeat that test now, and this will basically tell me if the hard start kit is required. Okay, we're right at the two minute mark since it last ran. Let's plug it in again. Well, that's interesting. It started and then it gave up. That must be the overcurrent protection kicking in. Let's, uh, I unplugged it off screen. Let's plug it in again. And no spinning. So at the two minute mark, it was able to overcome any remaining pressure in the system, but it pulled so many amps that the thermal protection on the common shut it down. And then it looked like from the meter, the protection might've turned back off, but it was too late. Now the uh, 
the pump couldn't turn itself back on. So now it's been about three minutes. Oh, it tried to start. Looks like it went for a moment. Hit the thermal protection and then gave up. Now we're at that steady nine amps again. So try again in a little while. And we're about the four minute mark since it last ran. Let's try it again. And we were able to start. So the hard start kit started after just one minute and the original needed at least four minutes. The hard starter three and one is hooked up more permanently now. I use these male spade terminals and crimp them on so that I could just connect into the original freezers terminals. That way I guess it's reversible if for whatever reason I need to do that. I'll throw electrical tape around this one since it's bare. But uh, yeah, this is the URC 0410 and I've done some more experimenting and it can restart the compressor in as little as 20 seconds. So that's great news. I can't imagine the freezer ever needing to cycle that quickly. Hopefully this was helpful to someone that may be interested in fixing a freezer that you find free online. Hit the like button if it was. Leave a comment if you've got a question. Thanks a lot for watching.